Hi, my name is Dr. Walter Crooks. I'm a chiropractic clinical neurologist in the Houston area. And today I'm here to talk to you about the devastating effects of peripheral neuropathy. Did you know the number one leading cause of deaths in senior citizens is due to falls? You see, some people fall because they get peripheral neuropathy and they can't feel their feet because they're numb. They put their foot down, they don't have good, land, good uh, uh, standing, twist their ankle, break their leg, Next thing you know, they die from a pulmonary embolism. So today I'm going to explain peripheral neuropathy. We're going to draw up the nervous system. I'm going to make it as simple as possible so you can kind of understand what goes on in this devastating disease. So the nervous system is comprised of two parts. You have the central nervous system, which is comprised of brain and spinal cord. And you have the peripheral nervous system. That is made up of the somatic, which is body. The somatic means body. And the visceral. This is the area of the spine of, of the nervous system we're going to talk about today. Peripheral nervous system. The somatic system is broken down into a sensory component and a motor component. And your visceral nervous system, well that is what goes to your heart, lungs, stomach, kidneys, sexual organs. It's what runs all of your, really your insides, your intestines and everything. So you could see what would happen if you get peripheral neuropathy in, your vis, in the visceral section of this, of your per, peripheral nervous system. You could have problems like heart palpitations, excessive heartbeats, t rapid heartbeats, tachycardia, bradycardia. You could have uh, uh, ulcers form. Also you could come up with, you could have liver problems, sluggish liver, gallbladder problems. See a whole host of things. You could get gastric reflux, indigestion, difficulty uh, uh, eliminating your waste, constipation, using the, going to the restroom, just lots of problems. It can also affect your sexual abilities, dry vagina, inability to uh, sustain an erection or even get an erection with peripheral neuropathy. Now, if you get a problem in the somatic sense portion, a little bit more common, people, well, they're both about the same, but people realize somatic usually. You get numbness in the feet, numbness of the hands. The peripheral neuropathy usually begins with numbness with the sensory part and through the long nerves of what's called the large diameter afferents. So the ones that run to your feet first. So people usually get it in the legs, toes, and it starts to come up and it's usually bilateral. So that's if we have a, a problem right here. Now, if you get a problem in your motor area, you can become weak, difficulty holding things, difficulty walking, pain when walking. You might notice that your muscles are starting to shrink. Your fingers might not be as fat as they used to be. You might begin getting, uh, uh, seeing your tendons on the back of your hands a little bit easier. Wasting of your muscles. We look at these kind of things when we look at peripheral neuropathy. If you get the problem up a little bit higher and it, the peripheral neuropathy attacks both the sensory and motor section of the nerve, well then you have numbness, tingling, burning pain, along with muscle weakness, strength weakness, problems holding things. It's dynamic. The nerve starts to die. What are the reasons? Well, there's a lot of reasons that could happen. One of the reasons could be trauma. You could have had a trauma that caused your nerve to start to get damaged and die. It could be autoimmune. You could have some process going on in your body that's attacking your own nerves, causing them to die. It could be because of something in your metabolic system. Glucose. Glucose is a big one. Sugar, excessive sugar, wears away at the nerve. It eats up the blood vessels that go to the nerve, the tunica intima, and then you lose the blood supply to the nerve, the nerve starts to die. On the other side of that, too little blood sugar, the nerve can't survive. You see, your cells need two things to survive and thrive. That's fuel and activation. Fuel we get from the food that we eat 
in the air that we breathe. Whenever we eat the food, it gets converted over to glucose. And then glucose gets transported to our cells, and in this case, our nerves. Too little glucose, the nerves, their metabolism is so high, they start to die themselves. On the flip side of that, oxygen. Oxygen is very important. So if you have an anemia, you could have peripheral neuropathy. It could cause this. Because anemia basically means you're not going to get oxygen to your cells. And if you can't get oxygen to your cells, they cannot live, they cannot survive, and they sure can't thrive. So those are the things that you would want to look for. We want to see things like this, and we test for all this. We would do certain tests to see if you have an anemia. We want to see if you have a problem with your adrenal glands. Adrenal glands are a big part of this because they help regulate blood sugar. Now your blood sugar wants to, the optimal range is between 85 and 99. That's where we would want it to be. Like I said, too much blood sugar, cell death. Too little blood sugar, nerve cell death. You could also have an infl inflammatory process going on. Inflammation kills the nerves because they get swollen, they can't get the blood supply, they'll start to die off themselves. So you see it's that list of things that we're looking at that you could have that could have started this all off for you. Diabetes, chemotherapy. So what we want to do to maximize your recovery, we want to look at you in three different ways. We want to look at th three systems. We want to look at you structurally, we want to look at you neurologically, we want to look at you metabolically. See it's those three systems that when we look at them and put them all together, we get a complete picture of what's going on in your body. Not just a partial picture. So let me explain this a little bit further with the brain and how this works. Brain and spinal cord. Out of the top part of your spinal cord, you have five nerves that come out of there. Those nerves go to your shoulder, arms, hands, and fingers. Problem in that area, which is called the brachial plexus or anything firm from that, you could begin having problems in your shoulder, arm, hand, fingers, numbness, tingling, burning, electric sharp stabbing pains, different sorts of pains. Won't ever wake up like it's always asleep to eventually where you can't feel it. Now the next area is the upper spine, thoracic. Twelve nerves come out of there. Those 12 nerves are what innervate your viscera, your heart, lungs, things like this. So we had a problem in that area, like I said earlier, you can start to have irregular heartbeat, things like this in that nature. We go to your low back, we have five nerves that come out of there. Lumbosacral area. And those nerves go to your uh, low back, your hips, legs, feet, toes. Problem in this area, we begin to have problems with our legs. Maybe you can't walk correctly, pain, numbness, burning, tingling, things like this. So we want to see if that's where the problem is. We want to find out where it began, what part of this is going on. It's usually, like I said, bilateral. So this is the areas that we want to look at. We want to do a complete metabolic workup on you, complete blood chemistry, checking for those things, anemias, blood sugar, different sorts of things. We would do certain protein testing, food proteins, because there is a certain a set of foods and there are proteins that are in them that people can have reactions to that can cause you to have immune system reactions. And those immune system reactions can cause you to have inflammation. Well, there's that word again, inflammation. And what's it do? Causes cell death. So when the cells start to die, we have problems because they're not working anymore and the other is no, nothing else around it because the inflammation won't let the nerves regenerate. So you could bring back, the peripheral nerves can be regenerated. You can rewire that area down there, but you can't have the same environment that got you there in the first place. So we would test for all this. We would do an adrenal stress index to see if you have an adrenal problem. We want to find out if your adrenal glands are not working properly, if you have stage seven exhaustion. These things are so very important. We'd want to find out because there's no use to beat this peripheral neuropathy for short term. 
We want real, lasting results. I want to make a positive, maximum positive impact upon your, uh, upon your life. You know, you've been doing the same things over and over and always expecting something to change. Well, that just doesn't work that way. You have to change what you're doing that got you there in the first place. And I'm not blaming you. You don't even know probably what the whole problem is. But once you find out, hopefully you'll change that part of your life, whatever it is, whatever we have to do, to get you back to where you used to be or where you want to be. That's living your life again and being human. You see, I made a vow a long time ago that I was going to help people with chronic conditions like peripheral neuropathy, things that nobody can really help, that no medicine really works for. And I've done so much research because I have chosen to select few conditions that I work on. And this is one of the big ones because it gets such great results whenever the treatment program is followed. It's amazing. If you like what you've heard and what I've talked about today, and you think that this might be something that you'd be interested in, sign up here on the page. I'm giving away two free visits. Call in my office. Ask about the peripheral neuropathy program. I'm doing a workshop. I do workshops on, the, on, the, uh, on Thursdays. Every Thursday it changes. But if you call in or set, set up an appointment, I'll tell you when the workshop is. And you can learn a lot more about peripheral neuropathy and how just because you have peripheral neuropathy, it's a physiological impossibility that that's all you have. Something else has to got to be going on to have you have the symptoms of peripheral neuropathy. I've enjoyed this time with you. I hope you have too. Thank you.